Hello and welcome to Forgotten Temples of Cambodia. Today you find me at Phnom Sam Po. But this place has a much more common name and that name is quite simply the Killing Cave. Why the Killing Cave? Well, it is exactly as it says. This place during the reign of the Khmer Rouge was a place of slaughter, yet another killing field for them to extend their genocide upon the nation. And here alone, 10,000 people were killed, a lot of those women and children. And it is an incredibly spooky place. It is the most spookiest place I have ever been to. So, allow me to take you around and show you something from history that should never, ever be forgotten. What you're looking at now is the stairs that I descended down to do that opening shot. Now, this is where my imagination cuts in because it is these very stairs that 10,000 people walk down but were never to walk up. And to me, what is even more frightening is they would have been shackled, they would have been tied, they would have been uh, blindfolded. But worst of all, they would have heard the anguished screams of others. They would have heard members of their family and so on. But worst of all, they didn't actually know what was going on. They know that they'd been accused but to what was going to actually happen to them, they don't know. Now, this, for many, a hundred years has been a place of religion. I suppose that adds another horrific layer to the tale. And this is the way to the caves themselves. Now, <laughs> cheery me, I mean... If it looks to you as though you are descending into hell, that's because you kind of are. And I, please believe me when I say to you, this honestly is scaring me and I don't scare easy because my logical brain can pretty much equalise anything. But this is beyond my comprehension. I mean... It is so, so bizarre to be walking in the steps of 10,000 plus who never returned. And what the Khmer Rouge did was they brought them here and killed. And as I say, you know, when we speak of death in a war, be it civil war or otherwise. We think of soldiers and stuff, but this wasn't. There was hordes of children for crying out loud and old folk. And they were senselessly slaughtered. And if you want a bit more eeriness, can you see the bats flitting around? As we turn round, there was only one group of people who made this return journey, as we are. And that would have been the guards. They even had two stairways. We often find with genocide, and you learn this from studying the Germans in World War II, with their death camps, is there was an awful lot of order. The Khmer Rouge themselves did like to take photos of their victims and do lots of paperwork. And do you know why they do that? To justify their ends. You can't have people just going around slaughtering innocent people. You've got to have a reason for it, haven't you? And their reason, of course, was they were all enemies to the state. Yes, explain that one to a five-year-old child.
I've just come up from the stairway there, which is directly behind your point of view. And yes, what you can see behind you is a collection of skulls. Now, it's pretty graphic, isn't it, to say the least, and, of course, incredibly shocking. But there's one thing you can't deny, and that is it certainly sends the message home. And that's what history is all about, is lessons like this should not be forgotten. So over my shoulder are the very victims I spoke of that descended the stairs there into this cave and descended yet again into what, as I've said before, is the best depiction of hell I've ever seen on earth. So, we've descended down the steps just to my right, which are fundamentally the steps of hell. They certainly were for 10,000 people. And over to my left, we see the skulls of some of those victims who will always be here to give their silent testimony, saying, in the name of all that is holy, do not ever let these kind of people do this again. But the one very important point is... How did we get to this situation where the Khmer Rouge, the Khmer people on against the own, their own people killed millions of their own? In fact, 25% of the nation, as I have said. So how do we get from one part where everyone's living together peacefully to mass genocide? Well, it was the Khmer Rouge as we know. And I can only give you a brief explanation here, so excuse me for dashing through. What it was, quite simply, was the Khmer Rouge means the communist, the red Khmer, the communist Rouge. And they, as communists do, had this feeling that everyone should be equal. It wasn't right that someone should have a bigger piece of land or a car or so on and so on. So they set out to level the playing field. And they herded everyone together. They emptied the capital of Phnom Penh. The entire capital was emptied and all people were sent out into the fields to cultivate rice. But in their incredibly twisted way, they saw people that were educated as in some way being richer, or they certainly had been richer previously because they could afford an education and potentially nice things like clothes. So those people became enemies of the state and had to be killed. It was quite simply insanity, but it got even worse because now you have, and it was predominantly young men that were doing the killing as it is in every genocide, be it Africa, be it Europe, it doesn't matter. It's always the same sort, young men of a low education. And what they would do is question these people. But their questioning was a bit different to what you may see at your local police station. It was torture, torture and more horrific torture. So when there's somebody pulling your nails out with pliers, stubbing out lit cigarettes into your eyeballs, you are going to name names. And that's what they wanted. We want to know who is these people that are enemies of the state, who are these people who are bringing down our glorious march to freedom and equality. So people that were brought in and questioned, i.e. the people you see depicted in the skulls, would have named others because of the horrendous pain they were under. And keep in mind a lot of these people came from villages and Coming from a small rural village where really there's no integration with anywhere else, the people, the, the only people you know are your neighbours and so on. So they would be named. And so the killing went on. People brought in, tortured, 
told they had to give names as to who else was against the state. Those people would give names, they were killed, more were brought in. It was this carousel of death. And it went on and on and on. And it was so unbelievably pointless. Now, just above the cave, the uh, Kamais have put up a depiction of hell. And there's one particular piece in here I wish to show you. Now, what we have here is the spiky tree with people who are condemned to be forever up it. We have, well, people beheaded, and this would be a vat of oil. There's a gentleman who's about to put another one in. Over behind me is a gentleman who's having his teeth removed, we have someone in a board, another very medieval thing. This gentleman here is about to behead this couple. Um, but the thing that really gets me here are these two. Because that's all it takes really, isn't it? Some guy like this, who thinks he can judge people, and some guy like this, who thinks he has the right to do so because he holds the power. So here's the people with the power and here is the ideology. And that in human history, be it with the Nazis, be it with the Kemal Rouge, be it with any of these despotic regimes leads to this state of affairs. So that was the killing cave. And it is truly the most horrific place I have ever visited. Well, it's certainly on par with the death camps in Poland. But do you want to know the absolute irony of all this to me? And that is, I have lived in Cambodia for 14 years. I have traveled extensively, but this place here, is the most beautiful view I have ever seen in my history here in Cambodia. It reminds me of Sicily, a place I have a great passion for. And it's here, at such a beautiful, beautiful place, that these horrors were carried out. And therefore, this place is forever tainted. But as the famous expression says, you know, we have to remember history for otherwise we are condemned to repeat it. So the skulls and what they have on display here of paramount importance that these mistakes are never made again. This has been Mr B, Forgotten Temples, Cambodia.